how to destroy the enemies and the game's balance. And then, of course, speaking of which, when I did mention Barmeri Skelter, is there was sort of a funny news in Japan. So, the president of Compile Heart did a YouTube video said that they announced that there will be a franchise going to be almost finished, a finale per se. And you notice on the video in the back, there's a blur image of Neptunia pictures. So people said, oh, it's going to be Neptunia, but, but what happened? I mean, the last main game was Mega Dimension, and come on, I mean, we need more main series storyline. What's going on? It's always been spin-off, spin-off, spin-off. I mean, after V2R, which is, yeah, it is sort of a cop-out. It's the same game with new features changes of the game but whatever it was, that was the last main line of storyline for Neptunia and then you got Super Neptunia RPG and then now Vivi Neptunia another spin-off and of course Ninja East another spin-off and when it comes to continuity in canon they're not canon it's a spin-off that's how it is so for a while people thought mm, maybe Neptunia oh man we can't have that and then later on, on the day of the announcement, I think it was March 28th, the Keki PlayStation Magazine finally revealed what it is. And it's actually Mary Skelter Finale. Yes, the third of the series, I guess the trilogy, is that they're going to do their final game for the franchise. Yeah, again, Mary Skelter Finale. And. It's all about, well, the heroes from the previous game, they're teaming up, and they're have, gonna have new characters also. So, technically, gotta give props, it's a situation of everyone is here. Because I, I don't, I have to still play Mary Skelter 2, I haven't played, I mean, I did also play the first one barely yet, so I gotta play those games. But from what I heard, according to the magazine, yeah, it's gonna be, everyone's gonna be there, Jack's gonna be back, and it's not gonna be the Monster Jack or... Glitch Jack or something, or Demon Jack, I can't forget what it's called in the second game, it's actually normal Jack from the first game. Because again, Mer Mary Skelter 2 is an alternate storyline of what if this happened, rather that happened, and there you go. But this time, this one is all going to be in the game, it's probably going to be based on the first game, a sequel to the first one. So we'll just have to wait and see. Yes, people right now believe that this is the finale game, because of the title. Mary Skelter finale, but people even still say maybe, maybe possibly that once they did a main series Neptunia game, that's it, like they're done. Possibly, but we'll have to wait and see because right now Neptunia is what they're doing, and then of course there's still Ninja E, and then after that we'll just have to wait and see because Compilar in the past did say that next main Neptunia game is going to be 1,000% awesome, which I don't know. Hopefully, 1,000% awesome mean everyone is there. That's what it is. Everyone is there. So, yeah. So, in Japan, it was announced. Mary Skelter finale. It's going to come out this August of 2020 as of right now. And so, if we're going to translate that, that's probably going to be August of 2021. And my only guess, the reason is that, one, it takes time to localize this game. And as of right now, from what I heard, Idea Factory International, they're not really that big. The last time I heard, there were only 15 people, so there you go. Time, resource, name, and of course now with the situation, I wouldn't be surprised it's going to be longer. And for me, I have no problem with it if that happens, because the most important thing, like I said before, that health, safety, the most important thing is my opinion about it. But we'll just have to wait and see. And speaking of Neptunia, so of course, in the previous video about Idea Factory game, I did confirm that Mega Dimension Neptunia V2 is out in Japan on the, the Nintendo Switch. So the question is, will this also come out as a, outside of Japan? And the answer is yes. Idea Factory International also announced Mega Dimension Neptunia V2 will also come out outside in the summer right now that's what they said in the summer and there is a bit of downside down so in the previous video i said 
Hopefully this game will be cheap because it's old and all the DLC is included to this game. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Go Nintendo and some other side. I've even got an email from my dear factory newsletter. And they said that yes, the game's gonna be the same as the PlayStation 4 and Steam. So nothing added new, it's just gonna be ported to the Switch for people who still never got to play this game because we either don't have a PlayStation 4 or their PC can't play this game because it's, you know, it's one of the newer games. But unfortunately, the DLC you still have to pay. I mean, it's awesome that finally Switch owner can play this game. It's a fun game. It's an easy game, there's a fan service in this game, and the only bit of downside like is that this game, I did talk about it before, if I remember, links in the description box, is that the English dub is partial. It is very, very partial versus the Japanese sub, so, I mean, potato, potato, but yeah, I mean, I was always hope and wish that the English dub would be the same as the Japanese sub, but they did actually address the believe it or not in the anime expo a long time ago and yeah i mean the reason really is that at the time it they didn't have a lot of resource and budget for it i mean yeah unfortunately so like i think mostly got the budget went mostly to of course the side organization is the collectors but so they did also try putting each stuff with it but of course that's what happened because people like collector's edition, I mean, my opinion should be less collection edition, more on the English stuff. I mean, look at what happened to Judgment for Sega, the Yakuza spin-off. And I know a lot of people were not happy that Judgment didn't have a steel book collection or some uber collection. It's like a reversible copy and some decal. And yeah, they said because most of the money, budget went to, well, English voice, which is, you know what, I'm okay with it, and it should be, but that's only my opinion, so, yeah, that's the main reason why Mega Dimension Neptunia has a partial dub, Idea Factory International at that time also did address it, they are well aware, and someone even, I think there was a rumor that he asked, like, is it possible to add more as a paid DLC, and of course, they didn't do it, but there was some rumbling at a time that said he might consider it, but again, that's gonna cost. Would they do that for the Switch version? I doubt it. I mean, they're probably just gonna slap it on and that's it. Put it on the eShop server. And then if it's gonna be a physical version, it's probably gonna be limited runs because they have a good relationship with them. So, there you go. And also, I wanna give my thoughts on another announcement by Idea Fact International, and that is part of the Alchemist will finally have a physical release. So, here is the backstory of what happened. In the past, when they announced this game, it was going to be exclusively digital on the eShop and on the PlayStation 4. Yeah, there is no Steam version as of right now. From what I heard, the game even in Japan didn't really sell well. Maybe because the game wasn't that good. Some people claim because uh, one of the character was censored, had to put on a white strap on her chest. You know what I mean. And of course, one of the controversy for some was that there was only a digital release and uh, Idea Factor International did announce and said that they had no choice to do that or to release it because they don't have the money, they don't have the funding. And I theorize saying that hopefully it's not going to be a norm that push can to shove, there will be a physical release coming out. And props to them that, yeah, Ark of the Alchemist will finally have a physical release courtesy to limited run once again so in their twitter page they posted a tweet that said that yeah they're gonna have a physical release for both switch and ps4 but so here's a weird thing that's happening limited run first will release the switch version in their store at first and that's the thing they're not even going to be released simultaneously and it's only going to be the switch first and uh, I think the reason is that most people prefer Switch over PS4 because again, portability. So limited run will sell them on the Switch. And then Idea Factory International will sell the PS4 version, physical version, on their store on a later on, later date, later month, who knows. And it's kind of weird that why is both limited run and Idea Factory 
favoring the Switch over the PS4 could be the other way around because the Factory and PlayStation had a good relationship. Well, probably not so much after the censorship problem. Of course, the biggest issue was Super Nintendo RPG. People just really didn't like that. I didn't like it. You know. And they rectified it on the Switch and the Steam version. The same goes with the other game with Dead Alive and Dragon's Star Far Near. Awesome. And of course, they're going to rectify that with Dead End Request 2 DLC glitch costume. Hopefully, that, you know, the uncensored version. I voted for the uncensored version, but we'll have to wait and see about it. So, if it's a censored version, that means a lot of people in control, or they really just they want to change the image of Idea Factory, which is whatever. Kind of BS there, but whatever. So, it's kind of weird for me that Switch first is physical release, going to be focused on, and will be sold on limited run, which is again weird, whatever, in my opinion. And then the PS4 version will be in a later month. Days, I don't know, they just said later, and it'll be only sold in the Idea Factory International store there. So, at least finally, they're listening that people want a physical release. And I even said that before that chances are they might do a physical release eventually if they team up with Limited Run. They kind of did that before with Nurse 2, uh, Fairy Fencer, Advent Force F. Either with Monterey Chronicles, and of course they did also with believe it or not, Azure Lane. The yeah they did it, and yeah there's a limited version. You can only buy it on the store, either limited run or in the factory store. I know from what at one point Best Buy had it, but it was in limited quantity. There you go. And why is it so hard for them? Cost. And what happened if nobody buys them? And that's like. Well, I mean, you're selling them in clearance or in a lower price, they, they, don't, they don't make a lot of money. It's a business side, that's why, I mean, my fear still is that I, it, apparently it seems that Idea Factory are not capable anymore of doing physical release, maybe because Paskim's not selling, they're putting their games on sale all the time, who knows, I mean, kind of bummy out there. But at least, you know, they're trying at least to please some of the fans there. So my thoughts about that one, it's actually good, giving people option. I know eventually, maybe in the long, long run, it'll be like the age of digital. But right now, people want option, at least they are trying to compromise for both. Hey, you know, we can do it, but at the same time, we need resource. Okay, limited run, they can help us. So there you go. I mean, props to them for doing it, so. Also, I want to add this tidbit, and I don't know if it's true or not, but some people were saying it might be true. That apparently, I guess I'm going to guess the Idea Factory press event of 2018, that apparently Ark of the Alchemist at one point was announced that it'll be dual language, meaning English dub, but and then later on, the game and the news about it went incognito. And then apparently, then when the game's almost released, they announced that Yash is going to be sub. I guess no explanation given. But of course, it's easy to say that if you don't know that in Japan, sadly, Ark of the Alchemist for the PlayStation 4 in Japan bombed. Like, seriously, it bombed. It didn't do well. And probably the game wasn't too... Uh, interesting I guess to the Japanese audience and of course there's that censorship with one of the characters interesting that that is something interesting that I heard I mean wow so at one point they were planning to have English dub and then oh not anymore because of the game sales in Japan so I mean the moral of the story for that one is don't announce anything too early unless you make sure that you're happy with the sales just saying there <laughs> And before I close this vlog, I also want to give my thoughts on a recent announcement from Coppel Heart once again. No, not new information of EVB Tunia, but Azure Lane now also will be released on the Switch. So, of course, if you know in the past, it's been released in August of last year in 2019 in Japan for the PS4. And then in January of 2020, it was released for the PS4 outside of Japan as well on Steam. I got the Steam version. I'm playing with it. It's kind of interesting how the game is. The only downside in my personal 
opinion is again once again the lack of English dub so I did mention this before it could be one or two things happening one is it has the dynasty warrior syndrome where there's a lot of characters so they just couldn't do it or two is because Funimation has the rights for the anime version and they'll probably say hey look if you want to use the voice you gotta use the Funimation again I don't know if it's true or not because I know in the case with San Kagura former XC Tom did say before I know I'm repeating that one time and time again that they had plans to have San Kagura games to have English dub but they said there was some sort of legal dispute and they didn't want to disclose what it is which is unfortunate but again it was something to do with the business and the customers have nothing to do with it unfortunate but whatever that's in the past of course Yumi and Blazebrew cross tag battle she has English dub and yes it's not the same voice actress as the one in the anime so it is possible that could be debunked but who knows about it but yeah so the good thing is yes as you lean on the switch now that means more options so you can either have it with the ps4 if you want the trophy 4k chair factory or you can have it for steam go beyond 1080p frame rate go beyond 60 that's what a pc is or on the switch because you know portability so there you go so right now it's only in japan i don't know if it's going to come out outside probably once again it's not going to be worldwide because there's always been a common trend with compile hard idea factory is that they don't do worldwide releases it's not something they can't do especially if you're putting english dub but again it is what it is there so yeah those are my thoughts on idea factory game so far they're on the roll this year yes one game as right now or two games as of right now could be coming out in the US in 2020 which is Dead End Request 2 and Mega Dimension Neptunia and of course you get up in Japan beside like Vivitunia next one after that we do is Mirror Skelter Finale and then yeah, I mean there you go so those are my thoughts and with that I'll see you guys later one, two, oh, lucky me! Some embarrassing rumors are gonna spread if we walk home together. Crash a kablooey! Just kidding. Come on, let's go.